Hi there, Pete here. Hope everyone is well. Back again helping to dispel some of the nonsense in the world. In this video, we'll be reaching up into the heavens to check out the nonsense surrounding a solar eclipse. Now we're all familiar with solar eclipses and I'm sure everyone has experienced one at some point in their lives. Essentially, during these celestial phenomena, it can be observed that the sun's light is obscured, thus rendering parts of the earth to experience a short period of darkness or reduced sunlight. The recordings of such events can be traced back to the ancient Assyrians, of around 763 BC, and possibly even earlier, to around 4,000 years ago, during the reign of Emperor Zhong Kang. Although officially, Chinese records of eclipses began at around 720 BC. But to help us understand solar eclipses better, let's firstly have a listen to a definition of a solar eclipse. An eclipse in which the sun is obscured by the moon. Now according to this definition, it seems that the obscuring of sunlight is caused by the moon. But my question to you is, does the moon actually obscure the sun's light during a solar eclipse? It's a very simple question, and to help us answer this, Let's start by looking at a clip of a solar eclipse, but speed it up. Let's have a look at another one. Now, can anyone notice anything unusual about the clips, bearing in mind the definition presented earlier? Well, yep, you got it. And it was very obvious, wasn't it? If you look very closely, 
we can't actually see any of the artefacts left on the lunar surface from the Apollo missions. <laughs> But seriously, what is unusual from the clips is that we cannot truly identify the moon to actually obscure the sun's light. All we see from the clips or any observation of a day or nighttime solar eclipse is simply the sun's light being gradually reduced by what appears to be a circular or spherical dark object. In fact, our observations during a solar eclipse tell us very little as to the identity of the circular or spherical dark object, especially given that, during a daytime solar eclipse, we never actually see the moon traverse the sky, approach the sun and obscure the sun's light. It seems we're just too focused on the sun during a solar eclipse to not notice what object actually obscures the sun's light. So to help us understand this better, here's Dr. Peter Stein with a more detailed analysis of a solar eclipse. Thank you, Pete. It's good to be back. It said the moon orbits the Earth, and we are told the different phases of the moon coincide with the moon's orbital position in relation to the sun and earth. So when the moon is directly between the sun and earth, we observe a new moon. Essentially then, during a new moon phase, we observe the moon to be filled by its shadow, which would indicate that a new moon can only be seen during daylight hours. So if the moon is the sole cause for solar eclipses, what we ought to observe during a daytime solar eclipse is the moon approaching to intersect the sun's light as a developing new moon. But during a daytime solar eclipse, when the moon is allegedly between the sun and earth, a new moon is never observed in the sky as it approaches the sun. In fact, nothing is actually observed to approach the sun during a daytime solar eclipse. So to understand the moon to cause a solar eclipse does it appear questionable. Now some of you might argue that it is the moon, as what else could it be, given the vast amount of information concerning solar eclipses? But one thing we have to remember, and that is, our observations do not reflect the information provided, and the information presented to us about the moon and solar eclipses is just that, information. Moreover, even with all this, there exists no conclusive evidence that it is the moon that actually obscures the sun's light during a solar eclipse and a solar eclipse could be explained in other ways, like another celestial body intersecting the path of the sun's light, or that the sun actually moves behind a stationary object, or that it's nothing more than an illusion. Who knows? Until better impartial research is carried out, we simply won't know. Well, there you go. It certainly seems nonsense to ever consider or even put across as fact the moon to actually cause solar eclipses, as the information we're told about them does not reflect our observations. It makes more sense to have an open mind to what causes solar eclipses and just accept the fact that even after a few thousand years, we simply still don't know. So next time, when you see a solar eclipse, don't be like everybody else and pay a great deal of attention to the sun. Concentrate your focus more on the moon and see if you can find it. So till next time, always remember, if something doesn't make sense, it's nonsense.